Hi guys, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at the control of heart rate. I'll take you through everything AQA wants you to know about pressure, chemo receptors, and all of the steps involved in the control of the atrial contraction and ventricular contraction. So let's get into the video, guys. So let's get into the control of heart rate. Now, the heart is myogenic, and what that means is that it controls its own contractions. And in the middle of the screen here, we can see we've got the heart. We've got the sinoatrial node located in the top right of the right atrium. Now remember, left is right with the heart. We've also got the atrioventricular node below it, and we can see the bundle of his coming off it and branching into the perkine fibers, which go deep within the ventricular tissue. So let's go through the steps one by one. Number one, the sinoatrial node abbreviated to the SAN, sends waves of electrical activity across the atrial walls. Now this is gonna cause the left and right atrium to contract together at the same time. And that's once they've filled up with blood. Now number three, a band of non-conductive tissue separates the atria from the ventricles and that prevents that electrical excitation, that electrical impulse from reaching the ventricles before they've had a chance to fill up. And that non-conductive tissue is made from something called collagen. Number four, the electrical impulse passes to the atrioventricular node, which I'm going to abbreviate as AVN. Number five, the AVN then sends waves of electrical activity down the bundle of his after a slight delay. And remember, that delay is so that the ventricles can fill up because we don't want them contracting before all the blood is there. Now, number six, the electrical impulses travel through the perkine fibers, causing the ventricles to contract from the bottom up. And I always tell my students, think of it like a tube of toothpaste. You wouldn't squeeze it near the nozzle because you wouldn't get all of the toothpaste out of the tube. Instead, you'd roll it up from the bottom so that all of the toothpaste can be removed from the tube. And we've got a little diagram of a tube of toothpaste here just to remind you of that. So just to recap, the sinoatrial node sends waves of electrical excitation across the atria. After a delay, it goes to the atrioventricular node, and then it goes down the bundle of his to the perkine fibers, and the ventricles contract from the apex up. And I've labeled the apex at the bottom. So remember to mention the term apex, and we'll see that in the exam question later as well. So the control of heart rate next of all. Now, the sinoatrial node generates waves of electrical impulses that cause the muscle of the atrial walls to contract. Now, this is why we call the heart myogenic, meaning that it stimulates itself. Now, the rate at which these impulses are generated, however, is controlled by the medulla oblongata, which is the brainstem. So there is some involvement from the brainstem there. And what happens is that receptors detect changes in things like pH or oxygen. That sends impulses to the medulla and then the medulla influences the rate at which the sinoatrial node sends impulses, but it is still myogenic, it is still controlled by the heart directly. Now we can see here, we've got the medulla just at the bottom of the brain, and that is the brain stem there. So heart rate needs to increase when the oxygen concentration of the blood decreases. Now indications of that are that carbon dioxide levels increase, and if carbon dioxide increases, the pH will become more acidic because carbon dioxide in solution forms a weak acid called carbonic acid, and that will lower the pH, making it acidic. Now, heart rate also needs to increase when the blood pressure drops. So a couple of examples here we could have when you're exercising, there's an increased rate of aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration for that matter, and that's going to lead to more need for oxygen, so we need to speed the heart rate up to account for that demand. Now, changes in heart rate are a response to stimuli. And check out my video on taxis and kinesis if you want more information on responses to stimuli. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well, guys. It means a lot. So, there are pressure receptors in the aorta and carotid arteries. Now, the carotid arteries are the arteries just above the aorta that it branches off into. Now, there are pressure receptors in the aorta and the carotid arteries. These receptors are known as baroreceptors and they're stimulated by changes in blood pressure. Now, chemoreceptors are also found in the aorta 
the carotid arteries, but also the medulla, and they monitor the oxygen, carbon dioxide, and pH of the blood. And remember, CO2 and pH are indicators of that all-important oxygen concentration, because if the oxygen concentration drops too low, it could lead to the death of the organism. So let's have a look at the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system next of all. Now, receptors pass electrical impulses to the medulla along sensory neurons. And I've got some videos on nerve impulses and I'm gonna do a bigger one that combines them all together just so it's all in one place for your revision. But if you're not sure what a sensory neuron is, check out my video on nerves. Now, the medulla oblongata will then send electrical impulses down either sympathetic or parasympathetic neurons. And I've got a really easy way to remember the difference between the two. Now, the sympathetic nervous system speeds up heart rates and the parasympathetic nervous system slows down heart rates. And the easy way to remember this is think of the para from parasympathetic as paralyzing, slowing down the heart rate. So sympathetic speeds up, parasympathetic slows down. So how do oxygen, carbon dioxide and pH affect the heart rate then? Well, if we have a high blood oxygen concentration, a low blood carbon dioxide concentration, and therefore a high pH, that's gonna be detected by chemoreceptors in the aorta, the carotid arteries, and the medulla. And impulses will then be sent from the medulla along the parasympathetic neurons to the SAN. And that's gonna mean that heart rate decreases because we've got loads of oxygen. So why do we need to speed up heart rate and reoxygenate the blood by passing it through the lungs more times, you know, more times per minute? So actually, we don't need to speed up heart rate there. Now, the converse is if we have a low blood oxygen concentration, a high CO2 concentration, which would lead to a low pH or a more acidic pH, because remember about the carbonic acid, that will again be detected by chemoreceptors in the aorta, the carotid arteries and the medulla, and impulses will then be sent from the medulla, this time along sympathetic neurons to the sinoatrial node. And that's gonna speed up heart rate to allow more opportunity for the blood to pick up oxygen at the lungs. So the result will be that blood oxygen and carbon dioxide concentrations return to the normal set point. And because the carbon dioxide concentration returns to normal, so will the pH. So how does blood pressure affect heart rate next of all? Well, high blood pressure will mean that baroreceptors in the aorta or carotid arteries detect the high pressure. The medulla will then send an impulse down the parasympathetic neuron to the sinoatrial node, and that will lead to heart rate decreasing. If there's low blood pressure, baroreceptors in the aorta or the carotid arteries will detect the low pressure, and the medulla will send impulses down the sympathetic neurons to the sinoatrial node, and this will lead to the heart rate increasing. Remember, sympathetic speeds up, parasympathetic paralyzes, parasympathetic slows down. And the result will be that blood pressure returns to the normal set points. Now, normal blood pressure is about 120 over 80. 120, of course, is the systolic pressure, meaning that the ventricles are contracting, and 80 is the diastolic pressure, meaning that the ventricles are relaxed or the whole heart is relaxed, in fact. And that's why it's a lower figure and that's millimeters of mercury. Okay, let's get into some exam practice next of all then. So describe how the heart controls and coordinates the regular contraction of the atria and ventricles. So pause the video, guys, have a go at it, make this learning active, and then we'll go through the answers. So the answers are, First mark is for saying that the impulse will pass from the sinoatrial node to the atrioventricular node to the bundle of his slash perkine fibers. Now, AQA will accept you abbreviating sinoatrial node to SAN and atrioventricular node to AVN, and it would also accept either bundle of his or perkine fibers, but I always tell my students, which is you guys, to over-deliver. Do both. Now, the wave of electrical activity will then spread across the atria for a second mark. Remember, the semicolon means a second mark. The atria will then contract. And again, we've got a semicolon denoting the third mark. Next, non-conducting tissue between the atria and the ventricles will prevent the ventricles being stimulated too early. But you will get the mark for just saying non-conducting tissue exists to show an awareness of that. 
you'll then get the delay at the atrioventricular node allows the atria to fully empty or the ventricles to fully fill before the ventricles contract. So there's two ways to get a mark there. You could simply put the delay at the AVM allows the atria to fully empty before the ventricles contract. And the final mark is for saying that the ventricles contract from the apex upwards. Now remember, I told you to learn that term apex rather than bottom, because in some mark schemes, you'll see it bottom up slash apex. Other mark schemes, you'll see it apex up. So play it safe and learn the technical term here, guys. Right, guys, that's all we've got time for. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and good luck with the revision. I know you'll smash these exams if you keep watching these videos and working hard. Thanks, guys.